Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, working on Pentecost. Yep, we have another Holy Convocation Day coming up, one of the mandatory feasts, one of the three mandatory feasts is coming up very soon. And so I wanted to come on and do what we normally do during when we're this close to a feast, and that's go in and verify the exact dates. But before, while I was working on that, coming up with the exact dates, I came across this chapter here in the book of Jubilees. Now, I've read this book, you know, several times, even all the way back to the 90s when I first was introduced to the book. Um, but, you know, this part I found to be very important to, you know, the reckoning of days as to knowing when the Feast of Pentecost is. So I wanted to do a quick class on on this right here, talking about the year the holy year the sacred year um as we know we don't use the sacred year when we are uh reckoning our days on a day-to-day -day basis we use what's called a gregorian calendar we use the gregorian calendar which was signed into law i guess you, you would say signed into law by king gregory um it's a man-made calendar um which includes all of the man-made feasts, which is why King Gregory had to update it in the first day. In the first place is because the old calendar had the uh, feast or the the old calendar had Easter on a different day. And for some reason, he didn't like the calculation of Easter. So he recalculated Easter. Um, and when he did, it formed a new calendar and he put his name on it. And it goes by what's called the Gregorian calendar. But. We have to know that there is a sacred calendar, you know, before before um, man started writing his own calendars, there was a calendar in effect already. And um, we can find out about that in the um, several places, including um, Enoch and some of his stuff. But here is kind of a summary in the book of Jubilees. So we're going to jump into that. All right. Now we're going to jump all the way down here to verse 32 um, if you want to go back and read the other verses um, you can go back use your pause button or you know slow it down a lot you know so you can get up to 32 if you want to read ahead or read behind um, but I'm gonna start right here on 32 he says and command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning 364 days and these will constitute a complete year and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feast for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast okay so that's what should be jumping out to you first you know especially you guys who who aren't familiar with sacred calendars or the Hebrew calendar or anything like that 364 days 364 now, of course, our Gregorian calendar says there's 365 and one quarter days, according to everything that I've read in Scripture, like I said, including Jubilees, including Enoch um, and other books that talk about these, the, the actual calendar. We find out that there are 364 days, 364 days. All right, let's look at verse 33. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandments, and they will disturb that the seasons and the years will be dislodged and they will neglect their ordinances. OK, now look at this. Thirty three is saying that if we forget that there are three hundred and sixty four days, they will disturb all of their seasons, meaning you won't know what season we're in and the year we will lose track of the years. Um, and what does it say? And they will neglect their ordinances. They will not keep up with the ordinances. Now, when we look at what ordinances mean, it says a piece of legislation enacted by a municipal authority, an authoritative figure or decree. These are the orders from the Father. These are the orders of the Most High. These are those rules that we hear about in the Scripture. Those rules that the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug says are antiquated and we should not be following. Um, this this is why he is like this. This is what happened uh, when we go back to Jubilees. It's because of the fact that 
humanity as a whole has lost track of these 364 days and we have since lost track of the ordinances as well you reading right there in scripture if we do this this will happen if we forget about these days then we will lose the ordinances and we find ourselves both in in both cases we have forgotten about the ordinances and what do you know we've forgotten about the 364 days too so the bible is real let's look at 34 and all of the children of israel will forget Get and will not find the paths of years and will forget the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths and it will go wrong as to the order of the years. This is exactly where we're at, guys. We've forgotten the new moons. They, does anybody even know how to tell when a new moon is or even what a new moon is? Um, much less know that there is supposed to be a, um, a, a convocation on a new moon where we're supposed to actually come together and you know have uh, kind of like a uh, Sabbath day kind of thing well, nobody's doing that and one of the reasons why well the according to the scripture the reason why is because we've lost this we've we've lost the um, we've lost track of what the re what the year actually looks like the seasons we don't know um, um, which holy season we're in or we've forgotten about the holy seasons um, there are supposed to be um, uh, feast celebrations that we have both in the spring and in the fall we don't keep it we don't keep track of those anymore and the Sabbaths um, you got people arguing whether this Sabbath day is on Sunday arguing whether the Sabbath day is on Monday but when you follow the 364 day calendar you find out that the Sabbath day changes sure it may fall on Sunday one month but it may fall on Tuesday another month or Wednesday another month and Friday so to say hard and fast that the Sabbath day always falls on Sunday or Saturday puts us in error so in other words we've forgotten about the Sabbath days too and he says and they will go wrong as to the order of the years now we now this is important because we remember that the father in his infinite wisdom he laid out his eschatology with days on it he told us how long how many days we would have before certain events would happen um, you can read some of those in book in the book of Daniel and you can um, also read them in the book of Adam and Eve where he told Adam and Eve that they had five days or five and a half five thousand five hundred years before his word would come to save them talking about Yehoshua HaMashiach our Messiah but he also told him at day seven which is day which is seven thousand five hundred years we would get rest so there's a lot of people now talking about um, the uh, the rapture or the spiritual change that we're supposed to go through they're talking about the tribulation um, there's a lot of people mocking because these these people who are diligently searching out for the truth are making errors in their calculations and the dates that they're calling out are coming and going without any material manifestation well this is the reason why we've lost track of the years we don't we don't know exactly what year it is it's because we're using the wrong amount of days in each year all right, let's go on to 35. For I know and from henceforth will I declare it unto thee. It is not for my own devising, for the book lies written before me. And on the heavenly tablets the division of days is ordained, lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles after their error and after their ignorance. All right, this again, guys, is exactly where we're at. This is proof that we have, that, that the scripture is correct, that we have lost track of these 364 days. Why does it say, lest they forget the feast of the covenant? See, we're not keeping the feast of the covenant. Some of you guys listening to this will remember the feast like Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, atonement day, tabernacles, uh, Pentecost, or the Feast of Weeks, um, and the Feast of Boots. I think I named all seven of them. But you know, most folk have no idea that these feasts exist. And when you start talking about holy days, they their mind pops to holidays where they've taken the Y out of the day or the. the um, pointing to our father and replaced it with an I in the day but pointing to ourselves our our holy days is about the father while their holidays are about us what we're gonna get what we're gonna do what we you know it's all about us 
And so that's what that's what he's talking about there. He says, lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles. Christmas, Easter, Halloween, May Day. Um, these these are the feast of the Gentiles. 36 says, for there will be those who will surely make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. All right. Now we're talking about the disconnect. He's talking about the disconnect between the Gregorian calendar and the uh, Hebrew calendar or the sacred calendar. If there Anybody who studied this um, to any degree knows that there is a disconnect between the days because the moon doesn't line up with the sun. They fall. They, they don't fall in, in, in an exact order. I'm trying to remember my old engineering classes, but I think a sun day is approximately 31 days while a moon day is approximately 28 days. And so it doesn't line up. It doesn't come out. It doesn't come out right. All right. And what he's saying here, those who observe the moon when they're trying to calculate the feast days will find themselves in error. It's going to come out in error. You have to go. You have to go by the days prescribed. You can't look at the sun. You can't look at the moon. You have to look at the days as prescribed in order to stay on track. For this reason, the years will come up on them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day a feast day and they will confound all the days the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy and they will go wrong as to the months and sabbaths and feasts and jubilees this is exactly where we're at guys that's why you have so many people when you come around these feast days especially like passover and atonement day and 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 those big days when we're really expecting something supernatural to happen you have a lot of people to get on and start trying to calculate those days and what ends up happening is they end up calling out other days they end up saying you know that the Passover falls on a different day than what you calculate based on Enoch based on Moses based on Jubilees based on the information in the text and so what essentially they're doing is what is said here is they're picking an a, a unholy day or an abominable day and making it a holy day in other words they're having they're having their holy feast on a unholy day on the wrong day they, they choose it on the wrong day and we know it's very important to have the feast on the correct day you can't just do it whenever you feel like it kind of deal it's, it's a, a very specific time or a very specific day that he wants each feast to fall on but if you're not keeping up with the 364 days you're going to miss it you're going to be on the wrong day you're going to mess up um, in verse 38 says, for this reason, I commanded and testified to thee that thou mayest testify to them for after thy death, thy children will disturb them so that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons and the seasons and Sabbaths and festivals, and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. All right. Now, rem now the, the, the chapter six it starts off talking about noah and his um journey on the boat there on that ark and you know and so that's pretty much what it's about in the first part of the uh chapter and it kind of switched gears a little bit at chapter 32 where we picked up in his bible study but look this is what he's telling noah he's telling if you remember um that there were eight people on the ark with Noah. It was Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. And what he's telling Noah is, and these these were the only people left on the planet, you know, that we know of until you start reading between the lines there in Genesis chapter 6. But from 10,000 feet, these are the only people left on the planet. And what he's telling Noah is that after you die, after you die, Noah, this is what's going to happen. He says, um... Uh, for after thy death, thy children will disturb them, meaning they will stop keeping track of the 364 days after Noah's death. This is what he was told. And if you remember what happens, you kind of don't hear anything from the, from the father's people from Noah all the way up to Abraham. It's like Abraham was the first one who started reckoning these days according to the scripture. But, you know, that was a long period of time from from Noah to Abraham but look what he says for after thy death thy children will disturb them so that they will not make the year 
364 days only and for this reason they will go wrong as to the new moons we are now wrong as far as the new moons they will go wrong as far as the seasons we are wrong as far as the seasons they will go wrong as far as the sabbath days we don't know when the sabbath day is and the festivals we are having a hard time coming up with when these when these festival days are and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh now there is a um and we're about to close this out there is you know a lot of scripture especially in the uh, old testament that talks of eating blood and how that's one of the things that is forget forbidden from us to do is to actually eat blood and what this is talking about is when a animal is slaughtered like a cow or a pig or whatever it is you have to remove the blood out of it now hunters a lot of hunters you know when they when they take down a a deer or something like that and they will actually put this the, the um they will put the flesh in like a cooler in water for about three days um and some use vinegar and salt with the purpose of drawing the blood out of the meat drawing the blood out and then they pour that water they pour that bloody water out on the ground just as the scripture says but guys this is not the case in the in industry and i've i've studied this i've gone back into youtube and looked how cows are slaughtered for meat consumption in the industry they kill the animal they slaughter the animal they uh, process the animal they package the animal they put the put the meat there in a the store for you to buy and never ever do they allow that meat to touch water and you'll even hear and I've gone in and looked at other videos too where the people you know cooking steak or whatever and people will take the steak right out of the package pull it out of that dripping blood that's in that little styrofoam container they will take that out of the package and put it right in the pan they never allow it to touch uh, water and the thing is if when you do it this way the blood is still in the meat the blood is still there it's not gone anywhere you haven't given it an opportunity to go anywhere that's what that red liquid is and you 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 be around people who who hate rare meat you ever be around people who ate rare meat and one of the things they'll talk about is blood oh it's so bloody it's so bloody all of that rare liquid is bloody and stuff it is it's actually blood but what is their solution cook it more to they like it well done i want mine well done i don't want to see any pink stuff well the thing is guys you cannot remove the blood with heat all you did was essentially change the color from pink to brown you're still eating the blood you're eating cooked blood now you know and so that's where we're at now we are eating blood we are eating this with all kinds of flesh and um all right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Hope you got something out of it. Um, remember, we are trying to repair the breaches. We're trying to restore the paths to dwell in, meaning we're trying to get back on track. And one of the things we know is that these feast days and the Sabbath days are extremely important to get back on track. It could possibly be the most important thing we can do to get back on track to restore the paths to dwell in is to get back into these feast days and start keeping these feast days again we can read in the book of jubilees there how we got off track in the first place all right so retracking our steps and finding out um how the lord keeps time specifically when he expects us to keep our holy feast days will go a long way to get get us back on track if not get us there on his own remember the scripture says that he puts the Sabbath day as a test and if if we can't keep the Sabbath day we won't be able to keep any of his rules so you know finding out exactly when that Sabbath day falls uh, will be extremely important and I do know that there are a lot of conflicting messages as far as the dates are concerned um, there's one particular guy over there that keeps talking about Zadok calendars and and other people talking about other calendars and this date and that date but you know challenge him on the verses tell him to show you the verses coach in the fight over here at Hermes Academy we pull the verses out and we show them to you you know we can go to Enoch and pull them out there too we've done some stuff in the past on the Sabbath day on the Enoch calendar and stuff but we do it the difference between our channel guys is we we doing it based on the verses we ain't doing it on what we feel on what we think what we believe or what we heard from somebody else and I challenge you to, to to approach those guys the same way you know if you if you take the time to entertain their video look to see what verses they pull out and if they if they pull out any at all and if they don't challenge them on it 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Start working on the other classes. Subscribe to the channel. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.